Awesome. Right, so I am Johannes Selska. I'm a sales engineer at Sitecore. Um, I've been working with Sitecore for about 10 years now, uh, at Sitecore for about three. And um, as you can see, I'm, I'm not really a uh, UX expert or design designer or anything like that. Uh, apologies, my, my slide deck might look a little, uh, little strange. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, or send me a message after the, the presentation, uh, my handle is Triac. Um, the office, you know, I have a bit of a strange, difficult name. Um, so they, they've taken to uh, calling me Jay-Z. Oh. Yeah, clearly, uh, because of, you know, the, the striking would present me. <laughs> but I will be, uh, I'll, I'll actually be talking to you uh, about, you know, deploying Sitecore on, on, uh, on Azure. Uh, which is actually quite new uh, to Cypher. So in, uh, in November, we released Cypher 8.2 update 1, uh, which finally got, uh, got us to be able to go to Azure Web Apps or, or Platform as a, as a Service or PaaS or however you want to call it. Uh, before that, we had virtual machines that you could use. Obviously, you can still use that. And uh, cloud services as well. So cloud services is, uh, is, is the older Microsoft technology uh, behind this. Um, we do still support that for the older releases of, uh, of, of Sidecore, so Sidecore 8.1 uh, and lower, um, but that's not going to be um, developed new for the, uh, the 8.2 uh, update 1 release and higher. So right now we're going to just talk about uh, the web apps piece. Now, the reason why I want to show you this slide is that I'm not telling you to just you know, it's fair to use, use pass, always use pass, and you know, never use anything else anymore. Because as you can see, there's, there's some, some differences and some gotchas and some, some things that, that just won't work on pass or won't work on, on IaaS or, or um, things like that. So, you know, obviously if you need full control over your machine, then I would suggest you wouldn't go to um, pass, I'd, I'd use IaaS. And similarly, and there's, there's some other uh, cases as well. Um, but there's there's lots of differences, and it's not the the, the magic bullet is uh, is the point I'm trying to make. Very important thing to keep in mind here as well is if you do choose to use PaaS, and the rest of my slides are going to be talking about PaaS, um, you can only use a certain amount of Microsoft data centers, and that's because of the reliance of um, of Azure Search. So obviously, you have to have Azure Search supported in that data center. It's not actually something uh, that we have any effect on or influence on. Uh, that is Microsoft, that whenever they roll out Azure Search, um, you'll be able to spin it up there as well. So UK South is actually missing from this uh, from this little image um, because that's one of the ones that they've, uh, they've recently, last month, um, added Azure Search support to. Right. Um, I just want to talk to you about how or what we deploy to Cycle when I'm talking about Azure Search. And there's, there's really two options here. So if someone, a visitor, decides to, uh, to visit my website, um, then they will hit the web app, which is running my site. The web app will talk to a SQL database, Azure SQL in this case. It will also talk to a Mongo database, that's, that's our uh, experience database. We store everything about uh, everyone coming to our site in that Mongo database. Uh, it's also going to talk to a session state, and in this case that would be Redis Cache. Um, runs in, in Azure as well. And then we have the Azure search, so if anyone wants to do any search, you can that. From an authoring perspective, it works in a very similar way. You just talk to your, uh, uh, to your management servers, um, which would talk to databases. Those databases would get published to the content delivery databases there. Management servers would also be able to talk to the search. Then on top of that, we have uh, processing servers over here. Now, processing servers, what they do is they take all the data that's in this Mongo database, aggregate that, collect that, do difficult stuff with it, uh, and stick that in the reporting database. Again, SQL uh, on Azure. And then we have a reporting uh, uh, server as well, which, as the name suggests, 
reports uh, things. <laughs> All very specific. All of this is overlaid with uh, uh, health monitoring or application insights. Uh, I'll actually show you uh, a demo. I've, I've actually tried to keep my slides very low and just show it to you instead. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go into that uh, in a bit more detail in a second. Um, <clears throat> now, if you don't want to use Mongo, a lot of times we hear, you know, it's, it's not Microsoft and things like that. We don't want to manage it. We don't know anything about it. We don't want to know anything about it. Um, you have different options. You can use the uh, Sitecore uh, XDB Cloud, so that includes Mongo reporting servers, processing servers, and also the SQL Manager uh, reporting database. Um, if you want to spin up your own VM with Mongo, it's fine. You can do that. You can use MLabs. You can use Object Rocket, and there's there's a, a number of other providers that you could use as well. So that's uh, that's how that would look um, in that case. Now, how do we deploy that? Very easy slide here. Uh, so on the my right, your left, provisioning uh, side there. Um, there's two ways of getting Sitecore on Azure. Uh, you can use the, uh, the, uh, the Azure Marketplace. Just do a search for Sitecore, and that's it. Uh, click, 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 and you're done. Or you can use ARM templates. Um, while we're on that topic, actually, remember when Steve said, you know, you probably don't want to have your, your license file in that, you probably don't want to have your uh, connection strings in that, passwords in that for your for cycle client, for cycle interfaces. Um, the ARM templates as they come, which is just a shared source, it's, it's, it's in Bitbucket. You download that, there's a parameters file in there, you just put in your, your username and password and all that kind of stuff. You probably don't want to have that in, uh, in source control. So one of the other options is that you can use the, uh, the key vault um, that, that Azure provides as well, which is a lot more secure. Um, sorry, that's, that's a little sidetrack. So you have your, your ARM templates effectively. Either way of those, that will spin you up a blank Sitecore installation, just the welcome page of Sitecore effectively. And you can then start using this deployment. Um, so I'm a developer. I'll do my code, um, and I can get that to Azure in, uh, in various different ways. I could use FTP or SFP. Um, I could use uh, source control, so I can actually use the things that Steve's been talking about already, AppFair, which creates a package and deploys that onto Azure. Uh, I can also just do one-click deploys from, uh, from Visual Studio. Uh, but you would publish that to a staging slot. And I'm pretty happy that I have no sales guys in the room. Uh, those staging slots you actually get for free with Sitecore as well, so don't need to worry about licenses there. Um, you do your tests there. After you've done your tests and you're happy that it's all working, what you do is uh, you, can, you can swap that around. So the staging site at that point becomes the live website, effectively. The live website becomes your new staging site. That means your warm-up has already been done, so the first time that someone loads your website, it's going to be fast immediately. It's, it's not going to have that, that ASP.NET kind of thing where you have to wait for the first request. So then we have all of this stuff covered, uh, so that, that middle part, that's all the Sitecore stuff, um, but there's the, the Azure goodness around there as well, uh, scaling, monitoring, geo-replication, security, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the application insight. And before I go to the applications insight, I really want to just run through the scaling uh, really quickly because it's it's quite a, an expansive, um, uh, expansive big topic. So the way that works is you have within Azure an app service plan. Um, so in your app service plan, you can then run app services. Big surprise there. Uh, you have a specific size. In this case, I have a, an S1 instance. I believe that's a one core, two gig machine or something like that. Very, very you know, uh, small machine. I can run multiple apps on that. So in this case here, uh, I might have two uh, uh, duplicated environments. Both are S1 because you set that up on the app service plan level. 
And as you can see here, the price tier is standard. It's an S1, uh, resources-wise. So this is um, uh, one core, 1.6 uh, gigs of RAM, actually, uh, is the S1. Uh, scale 2, I have two web apps. And uh, I have three apps in this example. I can scale that up which means I can make it an S2 or an S3, or I could scale it down effectively as well. I can go to the B level as well, uh, the basic level. But in this case, I've just scaled it up. Same environments again, but then S2. That's, that's a, a more performance uh, uh, underlying virtual machine that you can use. You can also scale out. And to me, this is where, where it really starts becoming fun. Uh, and I'll, again, show you that in the demo. But scaling out means you can just have Azure automatically add a duplicate of this, uh, uh, of this environment that I'm running. So Azure can automatically create another S2 instance with my three apps on, again, a real uh, virtual machine running there. Last option that I have, um, just to be complete here uh, in, in, the, in the offering, is uh, redistribute so I can have multiple app service plans and that's all right for my uh, for my actual app service you know I know that I have a lot of traffic I need a lot of computing resources so that needs to be an s3 really uh, and for my for my mobile app I don't have a lot of users for it or you know it's, it's, it's very low on resources so that can make do with an s1 so I could I could do things like that as well just to, to kind of keep costs down um, and, and things like that so um, actually, let's let's just discuss the, uh, the the roadmap really quickly. Don't actually have a picture here, so that's that's a bit silly. A um, couple of things that I wanted to just point out is there's a uh, there's a, a couple of uh, uh, modules that currently are not supported uh, on on PaaS, and they are currently working on that. It's it's in the roadmap. So uh, an example of that is is the uh, the email experience uh, uh, manager module doesn't work at the moment, the release is imminent, um, but next version it will. Webforms for Marketers is another one, uh, frequently used modules of, of Sidecores. It, uh, it currently doesn't support PaaS, so you'd have to kind of work, work your way around that. Um, roadmap wise, as I said, those modules will soon be, uh, be, be supported. We have different, uh, different templates coming as well, so different ARM templates with different kind of resources that, that get spun up immediately. So instead of having, let's say, two web apps, you might have one with five web apps spun up immediately or, or things like that, just making it a little easier, giving you a little more flexibility uh, to get in the cloud as, uh, as soon as possible. All right, so I'm going to sit down, not to be rude, uh, but, you know, it's time for a demo. So over here, I actually have my, uh, my Azure portal. I should still be connected, and I am. So I'm just going to wait until that's done loading. Yep. And I shall also set my screen certificate so that you can see. There we go. Right, so I have, uh, I have my, my dashboard here. I'll go into the resource groups. Um, so resource groups, for, for those of you who are new to Azure, uh, I can create a group for, for resources. So I can create one resource group per project if I want, or per client, or per partner, or per project, basically. So I'm going to find mine, and that is this one. And in here, I can see all the resources that have uh, spun up. So that will load over here on the right hand side. I can see my uh, deployment. So if I've done deployments, which I apparently have in this case, I've been using the ARM template, uh, you'll see the number of deployments that have or haven't worked. I'm going to go to the, uh, the application insights actually first. Uh, so this is one of the coolest things I think about the, uh, the, the, the entire pass offering that we have. Uh, there is so much information in here. Uh, I'll zoom in just a little bit so hopefully you guys can, can see it a little bit while I can still browse around. I hope this is a little better. 
Um, so over here I have some, uh, some options. So if I scroll down, which I now have to do, I have a graph here. I can use the search box here to, to actually display what I need to uh, um, uh, have included in this data. I can also go into the analytics, so a, a very detailed view of my logs. I can actually just run some queries. It's, it's a database view kind of thing. But over here, I can see my failed requests, my server requests, and these are just the, the out-of-the-box ones. I can uh, change this if I wanted to as well. In this case, I might be interested in the, in the failed requests, so I'm going to click on one of these, which will open my failed requests. It will show me all of the requests that have failed in this time. And I can see what has been uh, failing here. So apparently my main.aspx um, has been failing 100% of the time. Not very good. <coughs> um, but I can then click on each of those as well. Oops. <coughs> to see um, a, a, a more detailed uh, review here, and again, I can click into that as well. This can actually connect to your uh, to your to your Git repositories, for instance, Visual Studio Online. If I click New Work Item here, I can actually immediately create a, uh, a bug report saying, you know, this should be fixed. Um, I actually know why this is because I've been lazy and I've only deployed my uh, my site to one of the four different instances that that, I, that I've spun up. Uh, so that's that's some really cool stuff here. It immediately integrates with with my source control. I can immediately assign this to someone to get this fixed. They get all of this information here. I can create alerts on this as well. Um, so yeah, that's some some really cool stuff. I actually have a little piece of paper here, so that I won't forget what I should uh, should actually show you. Um, <clears throat> So scrolling all the way back, and let me close this blade here. Back to AI, the application insights, obviously. Um, the next thing I wanted to discuss uh, is the alerts here. So I can start creating alerts, and this is not just alerts based on Sorry, it's taking just a second to load. This is not just alerts based on your site has fallen down, maybe you should take a look at it. Uh, it's also using Azure's machine learning uh, to leverage this kind of stuff. So uh, if Azure finds that on a, on a Windows phone, my site is running you know, a lot slower than on any of the other devices that are, that are uh, browsing to it, I can actually create an alert to give me that. That, that kind of predictive or, or proactive information so that I can immediately start digging into that. Very powerful feature there. Um, you've already seen this availability. I can create an availability test. So Steve actually uh, showed that in, um, uh, in, in one of his slides. Now I don't have one, but what I can do is I can click add a web test. Uh, I can give it a name, and this just allows me to check every, in this case, five minutes over here, that my website is actually up and running. It's responding, so I need I, I know immediately whether or not everything is running as expected as well. Uh, I can have some uh, some success criteria. When do I want to actually get a, uh, an alert as well? All that kind of stuff. <coughs> Right, so I am um, going to dive into the CM. So this is my application service. This is what's actually running. If I click on, again, when it loads up. Um, so this is, this is my web application. I've deployed my website on top of this. So when this loads up, I'll have a browse button here. <coughs> Just click that, let that load for a second. That's actually going to just load up my website that I've deployed. Um, again, I've, I've done that using our ARM templates. That doesn't mean that that's how you need to do it, but it's just one of the uh, one of the ways of doing this. Over here, I can get the requests and errors. Now, this is a, uh, a test site. I would hope that no one knows the uh, the actual uh, URL to it. Um, and you can see over here that no one actually 
bothers to browse it, which I'm pleased with. Um, but what I want to talk about here is over here are my scaling up options. And uh, that is as simple as clicking on the scaling up and selecting my different price tier. Okay, so I've set it up as a, as a standard S1, which is one core, 1.75 gigs of RAM, 1.6 as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but I can select a different one, click select, and Azure will automatically uh, grab all the stuff that's on, on this virtual machine, stick it onto a new one without me actually uh, having to, uh, to do anything for them. The scaling up, as I mentioned, uh, I find that a lot more interesting, actually, um, because it gives me a little more, uh, more power. I can play a little more with the rules. I can define when I need Sidecore to actually spin an environment up or down. I can obviously scale by an instance that I uh, uh, enter manually. So right now, I just have one instance because I want a minimum of one instance. I can add that. I can you know, scale that out as much as I want. If I don't save that, change it for me. Uh, Azure would then uh, uh, do that, the rest of, the, uh, of that for me. I can also do a little more. Um, uh, yeah? So how does this work with cycle licenses? <laughs> if you automatically spin a new one and add it to the bill, or? No. Um, so at this point, uh, Cycle has two different pricing models. One is perpetual, uh, one is consumption. Obviously, with the perpetual model, which is where you actually uh, are licensed based on a, on a server count, this is a little dangerous to play with. You just have to put in, you know, this should be your max, because otherwise you might be a breach of contract and you know, no one wants to do that. Um, Consumption is a lot more geared towards this. So consumption means you can use as many production instances as you want. Obviously, at this point, you know the, the, the constraint there is your money that you want to spend on pass in this case. Um, so I can, I can spin up by a CPU percentage here as well. So uh, I can say that I want to have at least two environments with a maximum of six environments. And uh, if my CPU range falls between, I don't know, 72 and 100%, then I can, uh, I can scale up. If it falls below this, then Azure will also take care of automatically scaling that down again. So you don't have to, have to worry about that, you know, to keep, uh, uh, to keep an eye on that. The coolest one is the schedule and performance rules. So over here, I can actually build my own rules. When do I want to uh, spin up? What are my, uh, my, my rules that I want to use there? So I'm going to just click Add Profile. Over here, I can, uh, I can set up a, a profile, weekends, for instance. Um, what is my type here? Right, that's, that's going to be a recurrence. I've said that it's going to be uh, in the weekends. So in the weekends. Two days selected, start at noon, that's fine. What do we want to do? I can click on add rule here. So which resource is this for? Um, then what metric do I want to use? So I'll still stick with the CPU percentage here. The operator, so is the CPU percentage less than or greater than or all that kind of stuff. In this case, I'm going to build it as greater than. Um, Let's call it a 75 over 10 minutes. So if my CPU percentage on my CM HP server farm environment, or resource I should say, um, is greater than 75% on average over 10 minutes, what do I want to do? What's my action? I want to increase the count by one or two or whatever. And then the cooldown is so that Cycle isn't going to immediately spin up loads and loads of the, these environments. It's actually going to wait a, a couple of minutes before it's going to pull uh, uh, that resource again. So we'll click OK there. And as you can see here, it's now in the weekend, if this happens, scale up. I can also build an additional rule to scale down. I can build a rule for my weekdays. If I know that my, uh, my weekdays are a lot more uh, busy, you know, then I can, uh, uh, I can make a business case on that. Um, 
One more thing that I wanted to show you. Uh, actually, while we're here, might as well mention it. So Kudu, um, that, that's this advanced tools here. I'm not going to go into it. It's a bit more technical. Um, but this is this allows you to do a lot of the stuff that Steve was talking about with the DevOps or, or the continuous deployment, where I can have Kudu, which is the, the tool that uh, Microsoft calls it. It can look at my repository in GitHub, let's say. Um, if there's a check-in happening there, it can automatically run a build, run some unit tests, run some, some performance tests, things like that, deploy the output of that automatically to a, a staging slot, run the tests there to make sure that everything's working, and do the swap all automatically. So it's, it's really, really powerful stuff. Um, now what I wanted to show you, so a lot of the, the times I get questions uh, about logs. Where are my logs? How do I see my logs? And you know, if something happens, I don't want to dig around in, in tables to find exactly what went wrong. So what you can do is actually use a, uh, a log stream. Um, it is what it says it is. It's a streaming log. Uh, it, it gets switched off every 12 hours, so I'm going to have to go back into my diagnostic logs. These are the settings that I have. Uh, application logging to the file system. I'll turn that on really quickly. Then I can then go back to my log stream here. And this will now connect. I'm just going to wait until that message pings. I will do a refresh here. And as you can see, I should probably have run some tests because it's breaking. Um, that's really all I wanted to talk to you about uh, Azure and Sidecore and the really cool things that, that's possible with it. Only touched on a fraction of it and you know, there's some really, really cool uh, stuff coming as well. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so you basically predicted one of my questions with uh, the last login. But um, I'd like to ask not about login, but sort of reporting. So is it uh, <clears throat> some sort of reporting or visualization of uh, scalability peaks and uh, how, how it was uh, increased, decreased over a long period of time? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's the application metrics. So I can go into the metrics per instance here. Uh, and I can get my performance counters in here, actually. Um, so when this loads up, I can... Well, I'm going to just have it hold up. Um, um, I think that will answer your question. Uh, but there's also the regular, regular uh, uh, analytics log files that you can you can query as well. So you can build your own very specific queries of you know what's my performance between X and Y date. And over here, uh, as I said, uh, there's performance counters and site metrics tabs as well. Uh, so you can, you can, you can use uh, my question was just uh, to get some sort of visualization of, pa of patterns to be presented to business. Okay. So you can plug this into Power BI. Um, so that would probably be the, your best bet. It, it gives you the, the most crucial information there. You can, uh, you can run queries and configure the charts on here as well. Yes, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, there's, there's a lot that I haven't touched on, uh, but yeah, that's a good point. The, the initial application insights charts they have, there's a lot more that you can do. Cypress' own performance counters are in there as well, so you can see all the cache hits, all the cache misses, all that kind of stuff as well. So it's, it's yeah. We're currently hosting our Cypress solution on uh, <coughs> Amazon. Yeah, AWS. And we encountered, we encountered quite a host of problems. To the point that we are now rolling it back to our own office, to our own premises. Yeah. Are you planning to do some integration with AWS, similar to the one that you are doing with Azure? Um, I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I'm, I'm in the UK sales team. Um, I just happen to like Azure, uh, uh, which is which is why I'm doing this kind of stuff. Um, but that's that's really a, a product question, I think. I don't know if, if you have any idea of, of uh, that. I would give a very cynical answer of I doubt it very much. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to agree, but I, I honestly don't know. Don't finish, don't finish it on Azure yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
I think some the, really cool stuff coming out still. The relationship between uh, Microsoft and Sarkor is getting a little bit too close, I think, for it for them to a kind of politically suicidal decision to to be too uh, supportive of other providers. But yes. again, that's Probably true. Yeah. not speaking for Sarkor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I have some questions, but I'm maybe not very entertaining from any other people about, <laughs> about licensing, because I just, for, we've got lots of clients obviously who are on site call, but of course they're all on federal licenses. Yep. You know, how do we, how do we transition? Because this is great yes. from a hosting point of view. Yes, it is. From a licensing point of view, it's a whole different story. Yeah, so we can, we can uh, sales can work together with you to, to do that. Uh, so, you know, if you want to catch up after this. The other question I had was, maybe it's pretty over with Steve's thing, is even if we can't do it for their delivery service, you know, it, it strikes me that using Azure for continuous development and staging sites and stuff, even if we can't use it for delivery service, has some, has some merit, again, yeah. license permitting. Definitely, it does, yeah. Because you, you have them there for an hour and you just pay for them for that hour, I guess. Yes, on, on the yes. Azure side. On the Azure side of things, yes. Are you gonna Good ones. Mm -hmm. Right? Thanks. <laughs>